Hi everyone, my name is Rebecca, I'm a fish biologist and ichthyologist and also a PhD student specialising and studying in lower card catfishes, also known as plecos in the aquarium trade. So I filmed a video on why you shouldn't keep lower cards and today I'm going to talk about the opposite, which is why you should. And really, discussing this is just why the negatives are just because they have requirements. They are a group of fish, they do are specialised different environments depending on the species but I'm going to talk about really this is why lower cards are so interesting and why people should be interested in them because if anything you keep fish that are interested uh, these are fish maybe not for your decorative aquascape uh, there's so many requirements that contrast so much with decorative aquascapes but these are fishes that are well just fascinatingly diverse and interesting. So there are 1,000 and I think 40 species of lorcards described so far. Um, that's a vague number from when I last looked, I think. And these are divided into several subfamilies, uh, which cause a lot of discussion whether they're plecos or not, which is silly because it's kind of like this pick and mix, which makes no sense. But why well, you should keep them? There's that many species, there's more than many other groups. They are one of the largest groups of fishes, exclusive to South America, almost entirely, uh, well, be velophilic, so liking lamina, well, liking flow, liking um, water velocity. There are some found maybe in less um, dynamic habitats, but still there is a current going in and out uh, so that would be like Tyroplexes they vary in size so much the smallest lower current is 1.8 millimeters. I think that's Nanoplecostomus um, Eleonori but I think there's, there's a lot of debate about which is the smallest and then the largest that would be uh, Acanthicus hystrix, Acanthicus adenis or uh, Pseudocanthicus um, major and they're about anywhere from 60 centimetres standard length but to potentially a metre standard length. There is another one, uh, what's it, Panak uh, Shafari, which is, all of those can be found in the trade, uh, may, um, Pseudocanthicus major is not that common, the others are. Uh, and that's another 60 centimetres stand length, so excluding the tail. This is a diverse group of fish, and it's not like all are on that upper end. There's a whole spectrum. Hypopotomine is a subfamily which is just almost, almost entirely miniatures, with the exception of uh, Pariahapsis, and it's kind of like Neoplecostomine, eh? uh, which is an unofficial group. So that includes like Otocinclus, Rhino Otocinclus, uh, all of these dwarf plecos. And then there's even sort of a variety of sizes when it comes to Laurel Carne, which is the whiptails, uh, such as Rhino Lacoria, I think is reasonably sized. Um, a lot of them tend to be maybe on the sort of medium to larger, so 10 onwards centimetres with some real giants. Hypostomine, everyone's favourite because there's so many, I think there's over 500 species in that one group. So that's your Baroncistrus, uh, Hypencistrus, Ancistrus, Ketostoma, um, Acanthicus, Pseudocanthicus, Scobinencistrus, Picoltia, all of those. Uh, smallest maybe around 5cm standard length and that's going up to the very largest lower cards. So there's so much diversity. When it comes to colours, you've got everything from the green to the... Um, you've got vivid green ones actually that are like sparkly green, a lot of black, a lot of uh, black and white spotted, black and white striped, uh, red... What else? I like... If you like brown lower cards, there's even more selection, I really. <laughs> um, there's a lot of the solid blacks, maybe a little bit more blue, um, gold. There's all sorts of coloration. They're so diverse in this aspect. And, well, I don't think buying them for the colour is entirely, because their colours do change. And that's probably why 
also they're so interesting because as they age and they develop they change just so much these ones would have had large orange seams uh, potentially maybe a little bit more spotted these guys definitely change a lot with age so that's maybe something so interesting about the coloration but the shape diversity there's the sand dwelling laurel carne which are like um pseudohemidon planilocoria spat no spatulocoria i that's a really difficult one because that's almost a, that's more of like a decor um decor roma i guess or like what's it hardscape wood something like that um and then there's ones which deal with more flat surfaces like flat rocks there's ones that prefer a more rugged surface there's ones that prefer wood um, and this is reflected in their body shapes you get the deep bodied the wide bodied the flat the long there's just so much diversity and otherwise how would they so many species live together in one space and that's what makes laurel cards just so interesting not just that but their diversity of diets the majority are detritivores or alcohols and that's even within the aquarium trade but there is diversity within that some specialize in different algae some specialize in different um maybe bacteria and it's not even well studied then there are carnivores and there's different kinds of carnivores there's the ones that entirely feed on the substrate and some might be herbivores or alcohols tritivores that feed in the substrate uh, there's ones that want flat surfaces ones that probably extract their food from the food item itself there's ones that go into crevices there's not just one diet and this is probably one of the most interesting aspects to cater for because a lot of the hobby kind of forgets this. Um, vegetables don't make the best, they're not even a comparison to their world up, but feeding mushrooms is really interesting. Feeding seeds, feeding fruits, um, feeding them obviously that range of algae, maybe even trying to feed them like Norway would be a different, definitely interesting thing if they eat it. And that whole, di they're just an insanely diverse group. It's like saying, um, you can't argue, I guess, that cichlids are, aren't diverse. But these guys are also, and they're exclusive to South America. So there's not like, there's um, law cards elsewhere. There's other rasping catfishes, but elsewhere. But they're nothing similar to the diversity of these fishes and we've got so much available in the trade uh, everything from I guess from the rarest to the least rare whatever um, stores different stores can get them in and even a common sort of a normal store can get in quite the diversity even the common pleco there's what five species that can be sold under that name uh, bearing in size reasonably I guess but they're just so interesting as a group of fishes. They diverse temperature requirements, uh, which means there's one almost for that spectrum apart from the really cold water. Uh, and even like decor, some prefer sort of more rounded rocks and would do better with that. Others would prefer the wood, the crevices, the stuff like that, different cave sizes, different types of spawning, some spawn on the glass um, and look after that and some spawn in caves. So anyway, I'll end this video here. Um, thank you for watching and goodbye.